And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey, and we need to also welcome our friends at FreshStitches.com. FreshStitches.com is under the leadership of Stacy Trock, and she is the designer of The Crochet Mystery Challenge. In this challenge, we're calling it Who's in Your Closet because we don't know who's in the closet until we work our way through the mystery. This is a three week challenge going from July 1st all the way to the 15th and then you have from the 15th to the 29th to be able to send in your photographs in order to qualify for the gifts that we have. So without further ado, let's look at the first component that we're going to be working on today and then once we get that done, you can join us again next week as we explore more of this mystery challenge. So let's take a look at today's component that we're going to be working on and you have the feet and the legs and you need two of these. So you just need a pair. You might want to do more than a pair though. I'm telling you different colors. I know this one is going to make you excited. As soon as a child around you knows what you're making, I'm telling you they're going to be lined up waiting for you to hook it as fast as you can. Um, really easy. Now, even though I'm an experienced crocheter, but I actually learned some key concepts with this particular idea. I've never done anything like this before. And um, it was actually, it was actually easy. Um, I would describe it like you really could start seeing it come together. And because of that, it was really exciting as you, you saw the foot just starting to materialize before your eyes. It was, is actually really an amazing concept and I was really quite pleased with how it turned out. So today's component, we're going to be working on the feet today. The following tutorial and all episodes of this character's crochet long has been designed by our friend Stacy Truck, Amigurumi designer and author. We are thrilled to have the rare opportunity to teach you and bring you a trademark celebrity character. Please be aware that the copyright and trademark laws associated to this character remain in effect. Your finished item is intended for personal use, gift giving, and or supporting your favorite charity. So let's review what we have on screen so that you can get off to the right foot. <laughs> Pardon my bun, I just made that up. So here's what we have is that we have the foot and the leg. You should know that the foot is actually one solid piece and then the leg is add, added to the project. We actually start right from the foot and work our way up so we don't actually sew this on. We actually work on it together. For today's tutorial, um, the project that we're going to be working on, I want to say what it is but of course it's a mystery. And what we have is that we're going to be using one solid color for the entire body of your character. You only need one ball. You're all also going to need three stitch markers. I just use a scrap yarn for when I do stitch markers because I'm going to show you what to do here. You're also going to need a darning needle to be able to do some fancy stuff with it. You're going to need some fiber fill because obviously this is stuffed with something. And what we also need is a size H or a size 5 millimeter crochet hook to get started. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start off with some tips because I'm going to start you off on the right foot. <laughs> Pardon the pun, I'm just loving this. Okay, let's get started. Now in today's tutorial, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be doing toes. Now I've only done two because the third one actually works together with the rest of them. So what we need to do today is that I need you to start you off with the toe and then you're going to do two toes and then they're going to be off to the side just like you see here. The third toe, what we're going to do is that once we get to the end of it, we are going to then start working and joining them all together. So we don't actually sew them together. You don't see that there's any sew lines but in actual fact what happens is that you come around and you start joining all the tops of, of this section right here on each one. So it becomes really easy. So I'm going to start you off with the toe and if you're on the final toe, the third one, I'm going to take you from that process as we start going all over to the other side. What I also recommend too is that I purposely left in the stitch markers. The reason why I did that is that I like to join my toes from my experiences is that I like to join them at the, at the stitch marker line and therefore I find that it looks a lot better. That's just my own personal taste. So I left them in. I just cut it, you know, spare yarn. Got lots of it. So let's uh, begin today. I'm going to grab up my red yarn and we're going to start off with the toes first. To start off with the toes, you will need a stitch marker. I'm just using spare yarn but if you like a other stitch marker, you can do so. Have that on the side. Oh yeah, before you begin, I need you to cut, I think about 18 inches of a string and I need you to cut, I need two of them per foot. So just do one and two. So if you're doing two legs, which you should be doing because the project does require two, um, then I would cut four. Okay, so have those on the side. We're going to need those in a little bit in this tutorial today. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start off with a slip knot and 
put it onto your hook and to begin remember that this slip knot never counts as one and we're simply just going to chain two. So one and two and let's move on to our next part. We're now going to go into the very first chain and we're going to single crochet into that first chain six times so it goes around in a circle. So simply just go into your first chain, grab the yarn and make your first single crochet. Let's count those out loud as we go. So we have one and then two, two and then three. See how I'm just putting that straggler on top? It'll get trapped in a position so I can hide it but this can also be on the inside of your of your foot as well. So we have four, five, and six. So this whole project works in continuous rounds. So what I want you to do is pull up a loop like this, insert the hook into the stitch that's right under it and grab this stitch marker and pull it through there and this is going to count as our revolutions as we go around. There's not a lot of revolutions to the toes but you still need to keep count so you don't end up with a toe that's like way out of balance. So let's uh, begin to work on our next part. This whole project we're working in the back loops only to create the effects that you see just like you see. See all these lines? That's as a result of working in back loops. We're going to do the same with this. So what we need to do is that we have to come to the first stitch here and normally we would come in and we'd grab both so that there's two yarn strands on top of the, the actual needle or the actual hook. What I need you to do is skip the first one and just go right to the back one and we're going to put in two double crochet, or two single crochets into there. In fact, what we're going to do is put two double crochets into each one of them going all the way around. So just the back loops only. As I'm just going to tell you right now, this whole project is on the back loops. So just keep in mind that whatever I'm telling you to do, you will always do back loops. Once you get the first one established, it's really t relatively easy. So you're going to go all the way around with two single crochets into each. So in essentially you're growing out the front of the toe. Once you get to the stitch marker here and make sure you do put your two in and before you continue just pull up a loop like this. Insert your hook again under that, that first stitch and then just pull through and then that counts as your revolution. So round number two is now complete. So round number three and four is absolutely identical. We're just going to immediately start in the first one and we're just going to go one single crochet per stitch. So this is going to cause it eventually once we get three quarters of the way around you're going to start seeing it bending. You can already see it's happening because we are now no longer making it grow. So it's going to kind of grow up like it's the side of a toe. So what you want to do is pop it so that when it bends it's going to bend towards you so that these loops stay in front of your face and don't get buried like a bowl in the inside. And you're going to go completely around. like this. So and then we want to make sure we get the last one which is where the stitch marker is. So once you get that last one in pull up the loop and pull that stitch marker again through there so you can see where you finished. So that was round number three. Again let's go around again and this is the final revolution of your toes. That's how fast this thing is. So what you want to do is that once you get to the end, if you're working on toe one and two of the foot, you're going to want to fasten off, weave in the ends, treat it really nicely um, because you want it to be really effective. What I would do is that leave that stitch marker in so when you're ready to uh, put your foot together in the bottom that you will know exactly where your stopping and starting is. Um, you might be able to see it but I just find leaving that stitch marker really is no extra time at all. So you're going to come all the way around and let's put, so we're on the very last stitch. I'm going to move that stitch marker up one more time because that's where it is. And so I would cut this yarn and then weave in the ends if I was working on one or, or one to one or two. Right now what I'm going to do is that I've already completed those off camera and you can see what you have here. So you have it nice and weaved in. There's no extra stragglers hanging out. I have my my stitch markers in and that's what you're aiming for for when you're getting your toes. So once you get your third toe you're going to be in the position that I am right now where you're not going to fasten off. You're on the end and this is where I want you to start if you're working on uh, the third toe and ready to make the foot because next time we ro rotate around this what we're going to do is only rotate it halfway and then capture the next toe and then capture the next toe. Come around and then come in the back side 
capturing it, and capturing it, and capturing it. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So here's a little mini tip for you here. When you fastened off, you should have 12 stitches going all the way around these toes. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that when we come around and we capture only six here, you only capture six here. So I capture at the stitch marker and go six and then jump to the next toe and then at the stitch marker I go again. It is so critical that your counting stays balanced when you're going through this process. If you're off by one, what I recommend to do is do two together and when you do two together you can actually decrease two stitches into one if you have to. If you're off and a little bit short um, I would actually put two single crochets into somewhere along the line so that you can have an imbalance. The whole de decreasing of the foot is all relative to these stitch counts being perfect as you're going all the way around and in actual fact what's going to happen is that the side of the foot here is going to be your continuous revolutions as we go. So right where we're starting at this point uh, on this toe here, this stitch marker is going to be the side of the foot working itself all the way down just like so. So let's begin to do that next. Okay, so I have my I have my toes ready to go and essentially this is the last one that I ended up with and that's where the stitch marker is. So in order to go around this revolution I have to only go six. So we're going to single crochet again still in the back loop. We're always going to do the back loop. So one and two and three, four, four, and then five, and six. So once you have your six here, you're immediately gonna grab your next toe up here, again in the back loop and just right where that stitch marker is, you just have to get that first one in, right where that stitch marker is, I want you to start single crocheting. Make sure that the stitches stay nice and tight between the two as you're going. Now that I put my stitch in there, I'm gonna pull that stitch marker so it's easier for you to see. So I have it in and I'm just gonna pull it. Now see that's a little bit sloppy. See there? So what I want to do is just wig give it a good wiggle and just really kind of pull everything nice and tight. Okay, so don't skimp on that because it's gonna, you'll pay the price of it later. So you have one in there. So let's do five more. So two and three, four and five and six. So we got our six in. So now we're going to grab another toe. So again right where that stitch marker is is where I'm going to grab it in. And again and I want to make sure it's nice and tight in. So just give it a good wiggle and just kind of pull everything tight. <laughs> Don't be a lady about it. <laughs> so what we want to do is that what we want to do actually at this point is that this is the final toe. There's only three toes. You're simply just going to go all the way around this toe. And again on the back loops. So essentially this whole round is about collecting toes. <laughs> I don't know why that's even, that's even funny but it's true. So we're just going to go all the way around. So you're going to notice that in the future revolutions is that we're um, going to start doing decreasing and stuff and we're going to know in the next round if we have enough stitches or not or whether we're off by one. Technically I've kind of done my homework in advance that I, I should be right but it's quite possible that I might be wrong somewhere along the line. So once you get all the way around you want to make sure that you're not going to grab the round that you've already grabbed. So okay so this one here I can see it's part of this stitch but this one here is open. Okay, so I know that I've gone all the way around and then again I'm gonna start now on this toe and I'm just going to start on one that hasn't been used yet. It's the next one in line and, and capture them. So as I'm talking, as I'm going around here, so I had you cut uh, two extra strings uh, before we started this and the reason for it is that even though you've joined it, you're still gonna see a slight gap and those strings are used um, at a future point in this tutorial to just go in with the uh, darning needle and just pull the, the gap shut. Okay, and then just come onto your final toe here. And again, if you get a little bit, wiggle it if you have to. Wiggle it just a little bit. I think that's a song somewhere. So we're gonna just continue to go around and we're gonna stop right when we hit that stitch marker. And we know that we've gone safely all the way around and that will be I believe round number um, 
round number four as we've gone all the way around. So that is just uh, a really easy way to do it and let's move along into the pattern and we're going to make this a lot easier. So you can see these toes now you, you're going to start seeing well at some point that they're not going to shape properly. You have to trust in the pattern because once it actually fills out a little bit you'll notice that it's going to be really amazing. Okay now that I've come all the way around we do want to make sure I'm moving up that stitch marker every time I'm going around so I don't lose count where I am. It's, it's kind of hard to be able to figure that out so I just move that stitch marker up again. And so essentially rounds number five and six are identical and all you're just going to do is chase around the, the single crochets with additional single crochets again going on the back loop only. So please complete rounds number five and six just single crochet around. Make sure you do move up that stitch marker as you hit each round and then check that off on your list for completing. So I'll, I'll see you back at the end of round number six. So I've now completed round number six. I have my stitch marker moved up and you can see it looks really cute so far. So now we're going to start decreasing it as the foot comes more narrower to the back. So how you do it is that we're going to start off with our first one and it says two together in the next stitch and then a single crochet in the next four and we're going to repeat that all the way around. So what's going to happen at this point is that your very last stitch should be a single crochet before doing a two together and I'll explain that more in just a second. So we're going to start off immediately and let's put two together. So we're just coming into the first one to pull a loop through and come into the next one pull a loop through. You will have three loops on your hook pull through. So those two just became one. So now we're going to single crochet four in a row. Okay. So once you have your four in a row you're going to do two together again. So coming in, grab through, going into the next one, pull through, three loops again on the hook, pull through all three. And those two just became one and then just single crochet again four in a row. So as this foot goes on we actually uh, get less single crochets in between all of the all of the two togethers as we bring it narrow um, as we bring it narrow in a, in a uniform fashion. So that was three, four and now the next two are together. So I'll just continue that all the way around. I'm going to meet you back just before we get to the stitch marker to explain just in case that you may be off by one or two stitches. So I've come up and I have my two together right here and technically I should have four stitches left but I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Technically I should frog but let's get real. I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, single crochet and I want to bring this back and balance because it has to equal this but I only have to adjust it once right here and then it will be perfect for the remainder of the foot. So I'm going to single crochet the first one and the next two I'm going to bring it together. Okay and then I'm going to single crochet the remainder two. So that I just had five stitches left and all I've just done now is that I just put an extra together in there so that I can bring the stitch counts back in balance. And I actually let's truth be told I did it here on this one as well and you really can't tell that I did it. So sometimes you just got to make it or fake it. So, that, so now I just have two left and I just want to single crochet them as normal. You need to end with a regular single crochet and technically this should have been four stitches back before the, the two together and I was just off by one so that's a way of compromising. So you can actually tell that you really can't tell that I did that and in actual fact I did it on the original two. I was off by one. So if you had for example um, say that you had three stitches left instead of four I would have put an extra single crochet in somewhere along the three just to make it bring it back in balance. The count does matter. So let's uh, move up the stitch marker again and that was round number seven and uh, you know sometimes half the battle is knowing where you can fake something in a project and that's where you could do it right here. So now going forward all my whole revolutions are always going to be in alignment because I've just adjusted it once and that's right here. So let's begin rows number eight and nine. You're just all you're just going to do is single crochet. That's it. So chase it around for rows number eight and nine. Be sure to move up your stitch marker so you can stay in balance. And when we come back, we'll have row number round number nine done, and we're ready to move on to round number ten. So it continues eight and nine on your own. So round number ten, we're going to start decreasing again. And so the first two stitches will be two together again and then three single crochets. So what I'm going to want you to do at this point is that I need you to grab up another um, stitch marker that you're going to need at this point. 
So I got my three in and the next two are together. So right around the middle point here, so this is two together, let me get this in. So right around the middle point I want you to put a stitch marker in and the stitch marker is gonna be in a weird spot. So I get in my three here before I go to another single or two together. What I want to do is that I wanna put a stitch marker across here. And so I'm just gonna grab this one right here and pull it through. We're gonna have to reference this because the top of the foot, the actual top of the foot and the leg come out at a certain point. So what I want to do is mark that before I continue because it says to go back to round number 10. I found it's kinda hard to count so I might as well just put it in there and so that you know where round number 10 is. So continue that same process going all the way around two together and then three single crochets into the next or sorry three single crochets in a row and then two together again. And uh, when we come back we'll finish off this round. So I'm coming all the way back around. I just have two together here and then I have three more. So because I changed, remember how I, I showed you how to cheat the system? So I just did my two together and it says three single crochets after that. See how the third one ends back up at the stitch marker? That means that I'm back in balance and that my stitching is going to work out. So I told you that was gonna happen. There is proof that it does happen. So let's uh, continue I'm going on to round number 11. And this is looking like the top of a rooster's head, isn't it? It's actually really cute. So let's uh, keep going. Okay, let's do rounds 11 and 12. They're both the same again, just single crochet. So just continue to, to go in and uh, just chase it around with single crochet. Be sure to move up your stitch markers. When we come back we'll have round number uh, 12 done. So please do rounds number 11 and 12, just a single crocheting all the way around. So I've got rounds number 12 done and you can see the stitch marker is really coming up. It's really starting to take shape and I want you to grab another stitch marker okay. And what we want to do is that we want to begin again and the first two are together. So single crochet the two together and then two single crochets in a row. And that's your pattern going all the way around on this one. So again, two together. Okay, and then two single crochets. And what I want you to do with that stitch marker that I just asked you to put, I want you to just pull up a loop here and I want you to insert it again on an angle. And this is gonna represent where the actual back of the foot, uh, of the leg is gonna go. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna show you when we get to the leg area where everything is fitting into this time frame or into this um, this area really. So let's uh, just continue to go all the way around. Two together and then two single crochets. Two together, two single crochets. When I come all the way back around you will have two together and then the final two by themselves. The second one of the two should be at the last stitch marker and in this case it is so I know I'm still in balance. So if you're not in balance I would really strongly recommend that if you were in balance in the last time just go back and make sure. It does make a difference on the shaping of the foot. So let's uh, begin to do round number 14 next. So let's begin to do rounds number 14 and 15 and those are just simply just single crochet around. So continue to do that just make sure you move up the stitch markers. So do 14 and 15 and then we're gonna start doing something else uh, once we get these two revolutions done. So please do 14 and 15. I'll see you back in just a moment. Okay, so we're just finished off round number 15 and what I want you to do is that we're gonna start doing some house cleaning and I want you to pull up a big loop here so it doesn't fall off. And what I want we want to do is that when we go to separate this here, you will notice that there's gonna be some gapping spaces right between the fingers or right between the toes, sorry. So remember how I had you grab up two strings? Well what we're going to do is that we're going to get our darning needle out and start taking care of these areas here. So let's uh, grab our darning needle and you're going to do one for each. If you have an extra long string you could probably uh, wheel and deal it, wheel and deal it on the inside to be able to hide it. So I'm just creating a slip knot on one side and you notice how the string's not very big. You don't need a big string because all you're just doing is just kind of tacking it across. So I would come up from the inside of this. Okay, so let's just stick our our darning needle through the the opening and come up on the inside and what our goal is is to be able to just seal together. So I'm coming up on the inside just to get started and I just want to make sure I don't stab myself. Okay, so I just want to come up so it's on the coming out there 
and before I pull this through I want to just kind of come up okay and then I want to go back in as quick as possible into a different section all the way back to that slip knot that I started with so that I can um, secure it on the inside. So I'm just kind of feeling on my way on the inside so I'm not catch capturing anything. And the worst thing you could do is sew both sides accidentally together. And so I'm just going I'm, I'm back now I'm just putting that slip knot on and now I can pull everything nice and tight. So basically it's it's now fastened on the inside. So you will never see a knot. So now all you're just going to do is just come back in to the inside. And we just start wheeling and dealing across the gapping spaces. Now on the original I went from the outside in but I found uh, within myself is that you know some I don't want these loose ends to fall out and I'd rather having that starting on the inside. Um, I'm just using my fingers also to make sure that I haven't captured any any of the of the inside anywhere so that they're not um, pulling tight together because we have to make sure that this can open up. So it's on the inside pulling it nice and tight and now I'm just going to go back and forth across this gapping space just like a few times maybe two or three times just to be able to pull things shut. Once you um, put stuffing in this um, it's going to change the whole perspective. So you want to make sure that you're just you're playing with it now. I also found that when I sewed everything that it actually made the toes kind of splay out a little bit more and I think that's actually probably intentional. So just continue to do that with both sides. Uh, you have two strings that I asked you to pull, uh, pull up uh, when you started this uh, particular tutorial. So do it and you will do this same thing with both of the feet. You're also going to do this with um, the other limb that we're going to be showing in the next tutorial for, for coming up as well. And when you think you have enough done all you just have to do is just tie it off. Okay we want to make sure it's well hidden. Chance there this is going to go to a child so you just don't want any loose ends popping out of this thing. Okay and then make sure that knot is exceptionally secure. Okay now that I've secured the both of the gapping areas like so you can always go back afterward if you put the stuffing in and you think it's still open too much you can always adjust it later if you have to. So now we have the opening and now it's time to get our fiber fill and just basically look at this one here. So you can see that it's stuffed but it's not like to the point it's like bleeding, <laughs> bleeding of stuffing. So we're going to now stuff it and make sure that you do get into the toes. It's not going to naturally want it to fall in there so you'll just have to play around and just continue to stuff as we go. So please stuff your foot at this point and just stuff to the point where you can get just see it come around the top here but don't overfill it. And make sure that you get and just use your fingers and really push it down into the toes area. Now that I have two feet what I want to do is I want to use the one foot to kind of measure how thick the other one should be. Once you seal this off like if it's too thick now it's not going to change later. So we want to make sure that there's enough stuffing so that they both thing are looking pretty consistent as we go and I think that's pretty close just like so. So let's uh, get ready to continue to do the rest of this foot and then we're going to move on to the leg next. So let's do round number 16 together and you're going to have the stuffing coming popping out through the top. Just kind of push it down a bit so it's not in your way. You don't want it to get captured in your stitches because you'll see it starting to come out on the outside. So it's two together is the first one is, is the first starting point. So two together and then single crochet the next and continue to do that same thing all the way around. So two together and then single crochet the next and when we meet back up I'll get you stuck on round number 17 then. <laughs> Okay number 17 is next and we do have some extra spacing here. So I want to grab my polyfill again and just kind of fill in that little space before we continue because it's going to get harder and harder. I think that's a bit much but we just want to kind of fill it in as we go because it's just going to get harder and harder the more we do it. So we just don't want the foot to be overinflated, but we want it to make sure it's going to hold its shape. Well maybe that's enough just like this. So round number 17 is really easy. We're just going to do two together into each stitch all the way around. Okay so basically the, we're basically going to convince it to half. 
So let's uh, just do that. So the first one and two are together. So it's two together. Like that. And then the next is two together. So continue to do that same thing all the way around. Every one will be two together with no single crochets separating them in between. That's why it's important that you have that stuffing in right now. Round number 18 is your final round and essentially we're just going to single crochet into the first one only. Okay and then what we're going to do is skip over and we're going to come over to the fourth. So one, two, three, four and basically it's the opposite side of this hole and you're going to single crochet over there. It's kind of awkward to get to especially here on camera. Uh, so we're going to single crochet over there and voila we're ready now to fasten off. So we're going to fasten off, tie in our loose ends and then what we want to do is we want to bring the knot to the inside. So now we're, let's just tie off first. Okay so that's off and all I'm just going to do with that darning needle now is that I'm just going to secure this final one in and when we do it we don't want the, outs the back of the foot to be pointy. We want it to be kind of rounded off as you can see. So in order to do that we just have to manipulate this a little bit and just kind of pull. Now what I would recommend to pull out that stitch marker that's going up through the side. You don't need that now and God forbid you actually um, <laughs> secure that in position. So what I want to do is just come around the other side of this and just go down and this darning needle is going to start pulling things in and around and you can use it to really your advantage to be able to um, kind of try to manipulate it to get a rounded edge. So you just got to be a little bit creative with it. Take your time and um, it's actually really kind of easy in, in retrospect as well. So um, continue to do that and then when we come back we're going to start the foot and basically we have already our stitch markers in place. So we're going to do that next. Let's begin to do the leg portion now and the leg portion starts right directly on top of the foot area. So what I had you to do is that I had you to do um, these stitch markers into place and they were rounds number 10 and 13 that we did that on. So what I want you to do is that we have to have a total roundage of 12 going all the way around. So when you're going to attach this you want to find the center point what you believe to be the center point of the foot when you're going to look at it straight back and you want to find the center point and essentially what's going to happen here is that the 10 is the front of the foot, 13 is the back and so you want on row number 13 you want to start off in the back anyway and what you want to do is that you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4 so you want to capture 4 stitches and then just come straight forward. So 1, 2, okay so this is round uh, this is 13, 12, 11. You get to 10 so you're going to come up here and then you're going to go and capture 1, 2, 3, 4 here in the front and then go backward uh, to again for rounds number 12 or 11 and 12 as you make your way back. So as long as you end up with a total count of 13 in a circle you are good to go and you're laughing each and every time. So what we have to do at this point here is that we have to just make sure that we're going to be looking at the center point in order to figure out where the first uh, stitch should go and once we get that then we basically can work in the configuration that you see here. To begin I'm going to create a generous slip knot with a generous tail and just like this. And so I'm going to start off in the back of the foot in the back corner and I just want to grab the front loops that are here that you can see. So just grab one and I've already determined where my center is just kind of mentally uh, before I pushed record today. And so let me just um, get the first one in. So I'm going to single crochet that one right to the first. I just want to put it right in and single crochet it right into position like this. This straggler you can leave on the interior of the leg once you get all the way around. So now that I have the first one I'm going to work over and I want to just go three more over. And that will help do this keep it in groups of 12. Straggler is kind of getting on my nerves a bit. Okay so that was two. This is three and four like this. So now let's turn it and I want to work my rows up. So here is the two rows. They're right directly in front. So just coming into the loops again. So okay so that was one and two. Okay and now here is row round number 13 here. So I want to just go and get those loops here. So I'm just kind of looking making sure I'm still in balance. 
Nothing's worse if you have a leg that's quite off. I'm sure a kid won't mind but I'm sure you'll notice it. So that's one, two, three, and four. So now it's time to head backward to the other one. So we have two stitches left. Okay, so we're just gonna come into the loops. So just look what's in the line. There's really no science to it. It's just a matter of, I guess maybe there is a little bit of science to it, but it's not like it's, it's hardcore. Well, once you come all the way around, we're also going to join the first one and we're, I'm just going to join it just to say that I did it and I'm just going to join it with the first one and I'm just going to pull, pull it through like as a single crochet join. Okay, and so basically you now have the center of the leg. The leg is actually relatively skinny when you, when you really look at it. And so now I want to start going up. Now the leg is absolutely identical. There is, the leg is absolutely identical. There's no growing of the leg of any shaping. So all we need to do is that we need to go up the leg and we just need to count the number of rings like it would be on a tree. And so you can either move the stitch marker up or just do a whole whack of them and start counting and every time you hit a line basically you'll notice that you're up one more level. And the key is, is that once you get one done you're going to want to measure it to the second one anyway just to make sure that it is right just in case you were off in any way. Okay, so now that you have your in you can take out your stitch markers. You're comfortable, you're good. And this whole other piece here that we started off with we can trim it so it's not in our way. The trick with the leg is I think to stuff it as you go. It's harder to stuff this whole tube area and you can obviously restuff it more if you have to but I would stuff a little bit in as you go just to make it easier for you. Again still maintaining the back loops only you need to do 17 rounds and so all you just need to do is count up 17 of the, of the lines that you appear to go across that appear to go across I said, like a, a tree and that just makes it really easy and you just sit back and enjoy it and just get as many uh, rounds done as you think that it's possibly and then just start counting and you can just verify. I found with this whole process because it's only 12 stitches around it goes relatively quickly. So continue to do, to do that and make sure that you stuff some uh, fiber fill as you go. It's just a lot easier in the end. So when we come back I'll have the leg completely done and stuffed and that completes today's tutorial. When you get to the, all the way to the end of 17 so you can count up the rings we're just going to trim off and I've already pulled the loop out and I'm just going to pull it like this. We're going to use this string to sew it to the main body when we get to that point of this tutorial. So please just leave it as is. It is stuffed and it is now ready to go and that completes today's tutorial. So that's it for today and thank you so much for joining me. On behalf of redheart.com, freshstitches.com Please join me next time as we explore more of who is in your closet. Until next time, I'm your host Mikey. And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to explore week number two of the Crochet Mystery Adventure that we're calling who is in your closet. We're teamed up with our friends at freshstitches.com and they're under the leadership of Stacy Trock which designed this pattern for us today. So this is week number two. We've already done the legs so you should have those ready for you and what we want to do today is that we're going to move up to do some more body parts. So let's begin to look at those next. So the next component we're going to work on is this fabulous arm and hand all done in one component stuffed as you go. You know you just can put some like you know make these into a clapper or something but uh, it just resembles some characters that we might have seen on television haven't we? And so I was really really excited when I started seeing the hand come together. I actually it's almost the size of my own hand and I was thinking to myself oh my god it's like perfect gloves if I only had four fingers. <laughs> or three fingers and a thumb. But I was really excited about that. So today we're going to explore and how to make the hand and the arm. It's all done in one and it is stuffed obviously. And then we have, and we have to make two of these nubbly little things here. Not gonna tell you what those are. No. 
<laughs> God, I'm, I'm terrible for ruining surprises. But uh, yeah, we're going to be working on these two components today. And then next week, we're going to work on the body and the assembly to put everything together because next week, it's totally going to make sense. So without further ado, let's go down to the studio and show you how to make a hand and the nubbly thing. The following tutorial in all episodes of This Character's Crochet Long has been designed by our friend Stacy Truck, Amigurumi designer and author. We are thrilled to have the rare opportunity to teach and bring you a trademark celebrity character. Please be aware that the copyright and trademark laws associated to this character remain in effect. Your finished item is intended for personal use, gift giving, and or supporting your favorite charity. So let's begin today's tutorial. We're going to make first of all this nubbly thing and that'll make sense in the next tutorial when you go to use it. So you just need to create it and just create an extra long tail that we're going to use to sew. You just need a little stitch marker or something on the side to create this. We need to make two of these things for one character. So if you're making more than one just make a few. And what we want to do is just start off with a slip knot and I do want to use this color. It's an accent color. You don't want it to use the same color as the body. And uh, what you want to do and, and in actual fact what you can do too is if that you're not sure what color it should be because you're not sure what this is for you can always wait to the next uh, one but you know what take a chance. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with your creativity. So let's uh, begin. This doesn't count as one so one and two. So you have chaining of two there and let's begin the next part. To begin we want to come into the very start chaining and of the chain and we want to single crochet into that same chain six times and it's going to cause it to turn into a complete circle. So that was one and two and just kind of getting it. The straggler just kind of trap it in a position. This will be on the inside of the project anyway. So one, two, three, four and five and six and before you fasten off or before you start going on I just want you to pull a loop. Get that stitch marker up and I want you to go underneath the stitch. It's like we, we, we taught before in the last one with doing the leg and we want to come in and we want to start putting that in there so we can measure our rounds as we go all the way around. So let's move on to the next part. Going in the back loops only. Remember that this entire project we're working in the back loops. So there's two strings. I'll explain that here because if you haven't been following the first one you'll get it this time. So there's two strings always so we just want to always come into the back one and this time we want to go two single crochets into each of those back loops. And there are six back loops going all the way around that includes the stitch marker. So in actual fact what's going to happen is that you'll end up with 12 stitches when you put two into each going all the way around. So if you're looking at the instructions and it says 12 that's what that means at the end. So two single crochets into each and remember when you get back to the stitch marker you're also going to put two in there and then the final one, the second one is where you will put that stitch marker once again. So that was the hardest part of this whole thing. <laughs> so let's uh, begin. We are going to move up to another level. So three and four are identical to each other and all you're just going to do is just chase it around with a single crochet again in the back loops and go around. So this will be round number, round number three and then once you get to the stitch marker just move it up. You can also too at this point you can just eye it up as if you want to if you just don't want to move it. This is only just going to take you a couple minutes to be able to make one of these and just put it off to the side and when we come back I'll have this done. So please do three and four single crochet all the way around and let's uh, then work on it from that point. So rounds three and four are now done. You want to make sure that when you have this that these lines are on the outside because if you go on the inside you will not see those lines. So make sure they're on the outside. As soon as you have your last stitch done just pull up on the loop. I've already cut it and we are going to use that to sew this to your project when you're done. You can also just take out that stitch marker if you want and you need to make two of these in order to have a complete set for when we're working on it. So let's begin the next part of this. We're now ready to make the hand and the arm and the hand and the arm is one particular unit. So it's just by itself and we're going to start off with the fingers. Now there are four fingers as you can see on this particular project and what we need to do is that I'm going to start you off and I'm going to show you how to do one finger but you have to do three fingers and finish them off completely just like you see here so that they can be ready for when we need to work with it. This is just like the foot but in it's essential with the foot what we had is that we had only three at the bottom like this. 
So what we're going to do is that we're going to join only three of them together for a little bit and then we're gonna join on another finger which appears to be the thumb. And just based on the way that Stacy has done it, it really does look like a thumb. It's actually pretty incredible. So I'm gonna start you off. We're gonna start you showing you how to do the finger and then because I've already had these already done, I'm gonna be ready to go then to then show you how to attach to make the final as we go. So what we're going to do is that what I'm going to do is that there's going to be um, another finger. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put one aside and keep two out because the third one that I'm about to, or the fourth one I'm about to make is going to be joining them all together. So just don't be confused by that. But either way you still need to do three in advance before you can even start doing the hand. To start doing the fingers, it's actually relatively easy. They are the same thing of the toes, but in the only difference is, is that they're longer, okay? And what I want you to do at the very end, we're gonna create and keep these stitch markers in the final stitch because what's gonna happen is if you haven't followed the first video is that these will join together in order to form it and I like to know exactly where this is. It's not always easy to tell. So you know, you're already there when you're finishing it off. You might as well leave in the stitch marker so it's easier for you. For your particular finger today, you're going to need a stitch marker for each one of them and you're gonna wanna leave it in the project. So let's uh, begin to make our first one and we're gonna create a slip knot and we're simply just going to chain two. So one and two and we're gonna come into the very beginning chain and you're going to single crochet six times around that, that chain itself. So the, around the stitch, uh, that final, the first stitch, <laughs> the first chain. I don't even know what I'm saying. So let's just get this done. So three, four and five and six now once you get your six, pull up a loop. I just automatically do it because I've been doing it so many of these things. So I'm just gonna grab my stitch marker and I'm just going to pull a loop through so I can see where I'm stopping and starting on these particular fingers. So let's uh, begin. We're just going to start doing their chain, uh, the next part of this in just a moment. Starting on the first stitch, again just like we have been with this whole entire project, we're working the back loops. We're gonna put in two single crochets into each one of the back loops for this going all the way around. So again very easy. You know how to do this and this is growing it out. Now these thicker, uh, fingers are no uh, thicker than the toes. So basically these are just extended toes if you really classify it that way. What you could do too is if uh, now that I say it in this tutorial but you could have actually done all your toes and fingers, well most of them except for the final ones if you would have in advance doing it that way. It's kind of how I've done the tutorial. Once you get your final one in there, just uh, move that stitch marker up and it's you're ready then to move on to your next revolution from that point. Okay rounds three, four, five and six are identical to each other. We're just going to single crochet around and so essentially it's a total of four rounds if you want to be really technical about it. Uh, what I also did for myself just to make sure like sometimes I'm like start second guessing myself is that I keep one finger as my my base and then I just kind of cross compare it to make sure that <laughs> it's not going to be a finger that's going to be way too long or too short. So again please uh, continues round number three, four, five and six. When we come back we're, we're going to I'm just going to tell you how to fasten off uh, to create one of these fingers but I'm going to keep the yarn on because if you're on the fourth finger you're not going to want to cut the yarn and be sure that every time you hit that that stitch marker that you're moving it up so that you can keep a count of your stitches accurately. I've now just finished up round number six and I have already moved my stitch marker and so I have a longer stitch marker now in position because we're gonna start the remainder of the hand. So if you haven't finished your fingers yet, you just have to fasten off at this point, weave in your ends and make it really pretty. Okay, so there's no loose ends all hanging out and leave in the stitch marker. Just cut the string, leave in the stitch marker so you can use it. So at this point in the tutorial, um, you're just gonna go back and make your fingers, okay, and you have to get to the point where this one on the hook now is your fourth because the fourth, you're not gonna fasten off but you're gonna join it like you did with the foot. And so you just have to grab three fingers all together. So you have this one and then these two and we're ready to go and start to put together the hand. So let's do that next. 
Okay, so let's begin to do our hand. This is identical to the way that you did the foot. So if you're not new to this tutorial series, you know how to do this already. So what we're going to do is that we're not gonna include this first one like we did with the foot. So we're just gonna start single crocheting and count and we're only gonna count six. So one and two and three, four, five and six and stop. Now what you wanna do is grab another one and right where you have that stitch marker, that's where you wanna go. So again, maintaining into the back loop only, okay? And this is when the yarn gets kinda of sloppy so you're gonna wanna make sure you pull things nice and tight. So coming through and before I finish it off, I'm just gonna wiggle it and get these stitches, get the flack out of it, slack out of it. <laughs> and then sing, and then finish the single crochet. At the, just like the foot, what we need to, to do, need to do is come back on it and just sew in between the fingers to, in order to bring them together. So we're going to start then and that was one. So this is gonna be two and three and four and five and six. Just like this. Okay. So now we're going to bring on the next finger and again where that stitch marker is, just continue to maintain it on the back loop only. And this time what we want to do is that you, do, you don't really need to count, you just have to simply just go around the complete finger. Like this. So just continue to go back loops around the finger. The fourth finger we don't add until a few more rows from now so that it will look like a thumb. So I really liked how Stacy paid attention to that to make the thumb look more realistic. Uh, being further back on your hand because you can kind of see that it is. So I really like that. I think that was really clever. So we're just coming all the way back around that finger. I'm also going to show you how to cheat the system because your counts have to be accurate as well. But right now it's more important to get these all attached. Don't go on to any of these back loops that are already attached. So we're just now going to start over here and coming on to these back loops. So once I finish one finger, I just jump immediately to the next. I think what I might do in this uh, tutorial as well is that once I get this round done, I think I'm gonna go back with the darning needle and I'm gonna sew the fingers closer together like um, we did with the foot. I think I'm gonna do it now because it's just easier to access and uh, I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, and again, once you get to this next finger, you're just continuing to go along. It's really quite easy. And that'll conclude off this revolution. Once you get to the stitch marker, again, you're going to move that stitch marker up. So I'm, I'm on there, so let me move that stitch marker up. I'm gonna pull a loop and I'm gonna grab some more red yarn and I'm going to just sew in between these fingers just to see how it leaves a hole. I want to just kind of fill that in now. It's just easier to get to it at this point. So I'm just going to fill in this whole area here. You can take out these stitch markers that are just there. So now here's what you have. And I just want to just kind of sew these holes to get more together that you see. So I'm just going to start on the inside coming in. So, and I created a slip knot on the other side of this so I can trap it. Okay, and I just wanna do my best to kind of sew everything together and please do this in between both sets of the, of the fingers on both sides. And uh, it'll just work out a lot better for you if you do it now than it would be to wait. Um, even if you finish the later on and you think that there's more of a gapping, you can always correct it later as well. It's, it's a very forgiving pattern in that sense. So continue to do that and I'll see you back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back and I have sewed in both sets of the holes that are currently in and I would probably address the thumb one also earlier. She says to address it further on in the pattern. I just think it's easier to do it now than it is to wait but there might be a method to the madness as well. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna do rounds number eight, nine, and 10. There'll be three and all you're just gonna do is just chase it around with a single crochet on the back loops. So please do eight, nine, and 10 on your own and when we come back I'll have that done and we're gonna start then working on something else. So let's begin to, uh, let's see you back in just a moment. 
It's now time to do the thumb and I've just finished up round number 10 and we're going on to round number 11. So I made the assumption that this, this extra finger goes on the side of where the stitch marker in fact, but in actual fact it goes on this side. So what we want to do is that we want to begin and as per the instructions we want to single crochet 18. So let's continue. So 1 and 2, 3, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't know why I'm there dropping stitches, 8, 9, and that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 16, 16, 17, and 18. And you see how 18 is on the final before it kind of turns around? So that means that my stitch counting is right. So what we want to do is then bring on this one here and join it just like we've done with the other fingers right where that uh, slip st uh, that stitch marker is in and we want to join it just wiggle everything nice and tight together. We're also going to want to sew in between to make it nice and tight as well and just rotate or right around this finger going all the way around. So this is how you add in the thumb. So that was pretty easy, right? So it's going to get easier and easier from this point because the hand is going to get more narrower therefore it's going to get faster and faster to complete. So really the hard work is really behind us as we are continuing along. So you're circling all the way around. Make sure you do not circle into any ones that you've already um, put into the front side of this um, when you came around. So basically one stitch for every single crochet that you're doing to the back loop of course. So there is the final. Okay and so that bring up the other hand part of the hand and carry on to see how this one left for there. This first one here is where we're going. So continue to go all the way back to the stitch marker. Okay, so we've just finished off round number 11. So this is what it looks like so far. And we're not playing any games anymore. So we're still continuing to go. This round we're going to start doing the decrease like we did with the foot. So it says uh, single crochet two together and then single crochet in the next six stitches. So we're going to immediately start off with two together just like we have been doing with the foot. And then the next six are by themselves. Two and then three. 4, 5, and 6, and then 2 together again. Okay, so continue to do that which includes the top of the thumb area all the way around and when I come back I'm gonna just show you a little tip just in case you're off by uh, one or two stitches at the very end just in case you added or subtracted as you went along. I can show you how to fix it without having to frog everything back to the beginning. So I'm coming all the way back around and this is where you have to adjust the pattern if you're off. So what I found is that I've just done my two together so I'm already on one and I should have actually be finished by the, this should be six. The stitch marker should be six. So I've already done one. So two, three, four, five, and six. I have two extra stitches than I should have. So what I want to do at this point is that I just want to kind of space it out a little bit but I want to put in two more extra um, two togethers in here to reduce the amount of stitches that we're doing. So when I put those two together I just eliminated one and then I just want to do it again. Just a little bit further down. You don't want to do it all at once because you'll have a massive indent but it's a great way to um, frog your, or sorry not frog. <laughs> it's a great way to kind of bypass the system and uh, you can keep your counts. You only have to do it this one time. Once you do it once the rest of your counts will always stay in line but it, it's a great way to do it. I actually had to do that on the original as well. I was off by one and because of that it just, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So let's uh, continue along and we'll move up to the next round. Okay, round number 13 starts off real easy. Two together again 
and this time we're going to do five singles in a row. So that's your repeat pattern. So it's two, two together and then five. Okay, so that was three, four, and five, and then two together. So do that same configuration all the way around. When you come all the way back around, I'm gonna do my two together. And because we have adjusted it on the last round to make sure that our counts stay in, I've just done my two together and I have one, two, three, four, five stitches left, which equals the configuration of doing the two together slash five all the way around. So again, you only have to correct it on re one revolution in order to make it right for the remainder of the hand. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And that's proof of that. So let's move along to your next round. I gotta move out my stitch marker and I'll see you in just a second. Move along to round number 14. Starts off really easy again. We're still decreasing and uh, we're going to do two together and this time it'll be four in a row. So four single crochets to, and two together. Please do that all the way around. I'll see you in just a second. I've come all the way back around and now it's time for the next round which is round number 15 and this time we're going to decrease again. So two together and we're going to do three only single crochets in a row. So two together, three. And we're, when we come back, we're going to take a slight break from uh, doing what we're doing. And what we want to do is that we want to go back and fix the gapping. So this is where she would have done it in the prod pattern. But because I already did it down here, I just have to do it right here. You can see that there's a gap a spacing going on here. So I want to make sure I, I get that before I continue. And it's easier to get it to it now than it is for this hand to be closed later. So I just finished off round number 15 and I just gonna I just pulled up a loop like this and now it's time to go back and time to fill in the gapping spaces. Now I've already done this one so I've showed you how to do it. I just have one more. So you see it has to be done. Uh, as soon as you put that stuffing in it will open. See? So you want to uh, just get your yarn and just a darning needle and I'm going to show you how to do this. So just I will do that and I'll come back and then we'll continue along with that and you need to make sure you fill in these gaps and, and do this before you continue along with this tutorial. Okay so I have filled in the gaps at this point. You could almost make a glove. Isn't that kind of cool? So now it's up to me to get the fiber fill and we're going to start filling the hand in making sure you really do get into the fingers uh, you know just be tactile, tact, <laughs> tactile with it just kind of using your fingers. Just really kind of push it in. It's not going to want to fall in by itself. So you're just going to get a little rough with it and make sure that you stuff it. But again once you have the first hand done use the first hands um, idea in order to get the 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 thickness because you don't want one hand much bigger than the other. And uh, continue to do that and you just want to stuff it to the point where you can st you can still work with this. So you just want the stuffing to stop at the edge of the stitches at, that you're currently at. So let's uh, continue to do that. So my hand is currently stuffed up into the line. You can see. I just want to have it a little bit in so that I can work with the stitches without the stuffing actually getting worked into the stitches. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start on round number 16 next. And round number 16 is really easy. Single crochet, uh, two together and then single crochet the next two. So the first two are together. It gets a little awkward once you get the stuffing in just so you're aware. So I'm just going to tell you quickly. So the first one's two together and then two single crochet and then two together, two single crochet. So let's uh, do this and when I come back we'll start on to the next part. I just need to have this in a better angle for me to do it successfully. And also I do want to double check the thickness also. So lay them down and just kind of bend down. I think I got a little bit too much in here but I'm not yet done this uh, hand as well. So I might just let it be at this point and work on it at that point. So you know you have to kind of judge it as you go. So two together and then two single crochets. Two together, two single crochets. Okay round number 17 is the final round before it starts getting into the arm. Okay, so right now we have 18 stitches going all the way around. So this round here, round number uh, 17, we're going to single crochet uh, the two together. So the first two are together and then single crochet the next one by itself. Okay, so two together and then the next one's by itself and do that all the way around. And this will then bring it to the point where you're going to start the arm next. 
hard part of the hand is now done and now you have a little hole and this is where this comes into play. So what we're going to have now is that we're just going to continue to circle around and around and around unlimited times until you get to the number 17. So you should be able to count 17 of the lines. See how they have the lines? Just count those and then what you can just do is that it's just easier than moving up a stitch marker each and every time. So rounds 18 to 34 which is a total of 17 rounds are just single crochet just around and around and what I would do is that as you get further along just add more and more stuffing um, to the arm. It's just easier to do it as you go than it is to come back later in my opinion. So let's uh, continue to do that when I come back I'll have this arm completely done. And finally when you get to the length you need you just need to trim your yarn and just simply pull out and what we're going to do is that we're going to leave this big string on because that's part of the attaching to the creature. When we're ready you'll also want to just make sure double check with your other one to make sure that it is the length that you want and uh, <laughs> what I can tell here is that one of my hands is a little more bloated than the other and so what I can do is just simply just reach in with my crochet hook and pull some stuffing out of it and you just want to keep pulling until you can kind of get it. It's easier to pull it out than it is to try to add it in afterward. So I'm just going to pull some stuffing to see if I can get it. I did this with the foot as well as I noticed one was slightly off than the other and uh, it's amazing. You don't have to pull a lot of it and it will just decrease it pretty easily just like this. So I'm more happier with that and I'm just going to use my crochet hook and kind of push the remainder of the stuffing back in. Don't you wish you could lose weight that fast? So anyway, so that's how I would be able to adjust it when we're ready. So that's it for today's tutorial. We'll join you next time when we have more free ideas coming ahead. So who is in your closet? You now have two weeks of clues. Have you been able to figure out what it is? Join me next week as we explore more of this pattern because next week is the final reveal. Until then, we'll see ya. <laughs> I love this hand. It's so cute. Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today let's also welcome our friends back at freshstitches.com because today is the reveal day and this is what you've been working on for the last few weeks. We've been working on Mike the Monster. So if you've guessed what he is already, congratulations. If you've been in the dark and just realized now, say hello. And today you're going to be working on the eye. You're also going to be doing um, the assembly. You're going to be doing the body as well. And of course you're just going to do some final touches. Now you'll notice that my version is wearing a little graduation hat. Thought mo you, I thought Monar Monsters University. I thought you know what would be kind of cool. I just kind of made it up as I went. I did write the pattern up for you just in case you want to make your own little version. I did sew it to the top of his head too. So I got thinking to myself you know people carry around gnomes, take pictures. I think this is my new mascot to take with me when I travel because I think he's so super cute. He was even thinking about the crochet crowd cruises. You know I might change his hat to a little uh, sailor's hat. That'd be kind of fun too. So at the end of this video I'll tell you a little bit more on how to be able to submit your items because you have until the 29th of July in order to send us a finished photograph of your finished Mike the Monster in order to qualify for the fabulous prizes uh, sponsored by Red Heart Yards as well as the crochet crowd. The following tutorial and all episodes of this character's crochet along has been designed by our friend Stacy Truck, Amigurumi designer and author. We are thrilled to have the rare opportunity to teach and bring you a trademark celebrity character. Please be aware that the copyright and trademark laws associated to this character remain in effect. Your finished item is intended for personal use, gift giving and or supporting your favorite charity. Let's begin to work on the eye next and the eye is just a flat solid panel and again working in the back loops you can see that you'll have the effect of that going on and it's really really easy just to be able to follow along. So just grab your yarn that you want to use for the eye preferably white if that makes any sense. Grab a stitch marker that you can have and let's begin and we're going to start off with chaining of two. So just one and two and now let's come back to the very start one and we want to put six single crochets into the starting chain. So one and two and three, four, five 
and 6 and I want to adjust that string. I kind of did a weird thing somewhere along the line. So we have that. We have 6 and what I want you to do is grab that stitch marker. Let's come up underneath the 6 because that will be our gauging as we go all the way around to be able to measure our rounds as we go. So once you have your 6, just pull everything back tight and let's begin our next round. Okay, round number 2 is really easy. We're just going to start and coming into the first back loop. We're only going to work on the back loops on these things and we're going to put 2 single crochets into each as we come all the way around. And this is going to double the, the circle or the eye. And essentially you have at this last round we had 6 um, stitches. So when you put 2 into each it equals 12. So I'm using that stitch marker to help me make sure that I don't lose count because we're going in a continuous round without any slip stitching and so it becomes a little bit of a, a task if you try to find your start and stops. So once you come all the way around please move that stitch marker up again into the underneath of the final one so that you know where that is and let's move along to your next round. Okay, round number 3 is very easy. Just starting in the first one we want to put 2 single crochet into the same one and then the next one is just going to be 1 single crochet by itself. The next one will be 2 single crochets and the next one will be 1. So you have 2 and 1. Okay, 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 is your final. If your final does not end with just only one sitting by itself you know that something is wrong with your count. So your um, you should always end up with the final number of the single crochet just sitting by, by itself at the end. Never 2 into the same one in the end. So let's move along to round number 4. So let's start off round number 4. It's the same configuration. So the first one is going to get 2 single crochets and then the next are going to be by themselves. So 1 and then 2 are by themselves. Okay, so there's the repeat pattern. So we're going to have 2 in this one and then the next 2 will be by themselves. So 1 and 2 and then 2 into the same one and the next 2 are by themselves. I didn't grab the full back loop. I only grabbed a part and apply it. Will make a difference if I let that go. So again we have 2 and then the next 2 are by themselves. So this is essentially if you're not comfortable growing circles this is essentially how circles are grown in crochet. Just matching the configurations up to grow them evenly. Um, most of the circles are actually always divided into into 8's or 12's and uh, because of that you have to grow it on all sides equally. Okay and so here is my final 2 going in and so essentially there's the stitch marker. See how I have 2 scro uh, singles left? That means that I have 2 singles left anyway so that means that I'm on key for keeping this in balance and it's all about balance for this particular project. Pull that slip, mar or slip marker through, that stitch marker through and you're good to go ready for the next round. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole round of this one. The first one is going to be 2 and then we have 3 by themselves. So that is your key um, repeat. So 1, 2 and 3 and then put 2 into the next and then 3 and please do that all the way around. Okay, welcome to round number 6. This is your final revolution of the eye itself and so what we have is that the first one will be 2 into the same one. So 2 and then we have 4 sitting by themselves. So 1, 2, 3 and 4 and then the next one is 2 into the same one. So please do that same configuration all the way around. When we come back we're going to be uh, just uh, finishing it off and leaving a very long yarn tail so that we can sew this on to the project when we're done. So again 2 single crochets together and then 4 by themselves repeating the pattern all the way around. 
when you get all the way around just stop and end and then just pull the loop through and just keep your extra long yarn tail available for you and then just put this aside because we'll be using this afterward. So here's the inside you can just safely cut your yarn strand on the inside and on the on the actual project what we do is that we put a little bit of fiber fill in behind the eye to make them continue to pop out when it's sitting onto the body. But right now let's just put this eye aside and we'll worry about it later. Let's begin. We're going to start with doing the body of the head. Let's just create a slip knot to begin with. Now you'll notice that the body is not a particularly round item. You'll notice it's like an egg shape and it's not you shouldn't expect the you should expect the unexpected I guess you should say is that it's a, it's kind of an unusual shape so you can't just assume that you know everything and you really do need to follow the pattern. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot. Let's chain two and we're going to um, single crochet six times in the beginning um, chain that you started with. So that was two, that's three, that's four, and five, and six. And again just like we've been doing before just grab a stitch marker or a piece of yarn. The yarn is faster. Just grab a piece of yarn just pull it through and that will mark off your number six and just pull everything nice and tight and let's move on to the next round. Let's go to round number two just like all the other parts of this body is that we are operating only in the back loops only. So let's start off with our first one and going two single crochets per back loop. Okay there are six currently back loops right now. So that means that if you put two into each you'll end up with twelve. So by doing the back loops it's creating a texture look to the, the body. That's why we're doing it. And when you come to the stitch marker which you can see there is that we want to uh, put in our two and then the final one of the two that's when we want to put the move the stitch marker up so we know where it is. So let's move along to your next round. Okay we're going to start round number three. In round number three we're going to put two single crochets in the first one and then one single crochet into the next. And we're going to continue to repeat that all the way around. So we're going to have two and one. And then we're going to have two and one. Just like that. And then two and one. Okay, and we have two and one. Now the reason why I went all the way around is that this is the final one. This is one. You will always end up with the last. So if, even if you have two together and then there's six in a row the last one before you have to do two together again should be in position. So this will be because you've already done two together here. So it should the last one should always just be a single crochet which is the last one of the of the grouping that you would do. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's uh, begin our next round. Okay now that you caught on to my drift here we go round number four. Single crochet twice in the next stitch and then two into the uh, one into in the next two. So the first one's going to get two single crochets and then the next two are singles by themselves. And then the next one is two. Okay and continue that same configuration going all the way around and then the next two are by themselves. And I'll meet you back up at the stitch marker ready to move on. Let's move up to round number five. Round number five is two into the first one and then there's going to be three single crochets by themselves. So one, two and three and then the next one is going to be two into the same one. So here's that configuration. So you got two into the same one and then three by themselves. Continue that all the way around. Let's start off round number six. The first one's two in the same one. And then we're going to have four sitting by themselves. So that's this whole revolution of that same configuration. That was three and four. And then the two together, or sorry, not two together, two single crochets into the same one. Two together would mean that I'm decreasing, but I'm not, I'm increasing. So two into the same one, and then four sitting by themselves. And please do that same thing all the way around. Okay, round number seven, we're about to start, and it's two together or sorry two in the same one sorry and then it's going to be five. So one, two, three, four 
and five and then put two into the same one. Continue that same configuration all the way around. This is, uh, we're gonna start changing up, it up a little bit just after this round because now we're gonna start uh, making it more oval shape at that point as far as like the going downward. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So remember two into the same one and then five by themselves. Let's begin round number eight. Round number eight is just single crochet all the way around. So now we're gonna start changing the shape a little bit to become more oval and uh, it, it's because we're now gonna start taking our time and growing this bigger at this point. So again, just please single crochet all the way around in every stitch you find. Okay, let's begin round number nine and round number nine is two into the same one, starting with two in the same one and then what we just do is we go six by themselves. So that's the configuration. So two and then six, two and then six. Let's uh, meet you back up at the end of this round. Let's begin round number 10. I simply just single crochet all the way around. So not adding or subtracting, just single crochet. I'll see you in just a second. I'll move up to the next round. Let's start round number seven. First one is two into the same one and then we're going to do seven on its own. So that's your configuration, two and seven. And I'll see you in just a second. We'll move up to the next round. Okay, let's move up to round number 12. Round number 12, we are just going to single crochet into each one. So again, no big deal. Just please single crochet in each one and we'll come back all the way around and start again. Let's start off row number 13. In row number 13, we're gonna put two in the first one and then eight on its own. So please do that same thing, two and eight. And I'll meet you in just a moment when we come back all the way around. So now it becomes really easy because now for the next 10 revolutions we're going to do one single crochet into each and this will take you from rounds number 14 to 23. So I just need you to continue to rotate just make sure you check off that you're going around and just move up that stitch marker each and every time. So please do rounds number 14 to 23 right now and I'll see you in just a moment. And then we're going to start doing some decreasing after that. So I have 14 to 23, rows 14 to 23 done. It looks uh, very unusual, doesn't it? You have to keep in mind that crochet does stretch and so you're thinking to yourself that doesn't look right, just go with it. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna start doing um, um, decreasing at this point. So let's go for round number 23, or 24, sorry, and we're gonna single cro uh, crochet two together and then single crochet um, the eight and next. So we're just gonna go one and then two. So the first uh, two are together and then single crochet the, the next eight. So we're gonna start decreasing. So every time you finish your eight, you're gonna do the next two as two together and then another eight and continue to do that all the way around. Okay, let's begin round number 25. 25 is very similar. So we're just going to do two together and this time we are going to do seven single crochets then next and then two together and continue to do that same process all the way around. Let's move on to row number 26, round number 26, single crochet two together and then six on its own. So let's begin, so two together to begin with and then six single crochets on their own. Please continue that same pattern all the way around. Let's begin round number 27. 27 is two together and then single crochet into the next five. So let's begin one and two are together and then the next five are on their own. Continue that same pattern all the way around. Let's begin round number 28. 28 is two together and single crochet into the next four. So again, the first two are together and then the next four are by themselves. So continue that all the way around. And when we come back, we're gonna start doing something slightly different because we're ready for the next process to go. But do not fasten off and do not do anything until you hear back from me. So just uh, sit tight. So we just finished up round number 28 and basically you just need to pull a loop. Do not fasten off and essentially we need to start working on the interior before we can go any further. And the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get our eye back 
in being able to attach it to your character. So what we have to do is that we have to look for rounds number six. So I counted back down and I put a stitch marker in here and then you have to find rows number 15. I just marking it instead of just kind of eyeing it out and then what I want to do is that I want to apply the eye and you have to make sure that the ridges are also facing out so don't put it upside down and what I want to do is that I want to have the up the upper eye and the lower eye matching within this time frame and the eye has to be an oval shape but oval in the horizontal. So not uh, not like this but like this. So what I need to do is that I need to look for this and then to sew it but the eye just does not sit on this character. If you know Mike the monster he likes to um, have a big eye that pops out. So what I'm going to do before I sew is that I'm just going to apply not a lot but just enough stuffing so that when his eye is sitting on top that his eye will protrude outward which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to leave that for you. So you essentially have a large uh, uh, string now hanging from your eye and so you're just going to apply your darning needle in and then just sew it and try to get it to the best of your ability to match onto this character properly. Okay now that I have my eye attached I'm ready to attach the arms and so we're going to use those you know, make sure <laughs> your thumbs are in the right location too that when you're attaching and we have to attach on round number 13. So if this was 15 here then I just counted backward on both sides and I just kind of eyeing it out as well and I put a couple stitch markers there so I understand where it is. So I'll, off camera I'm just going to put these together and sew it right into position before we continue and again make sure those those uh, thumbs are facing upward. Okay so this is what it looks like so far. I have my hands on and I have not stuffed the head yet but now it's time to bring on the legs and the legs we're going to put on right now as well and we're going to put those on round number 25. Just remember that we were finishing off in round number 28 and so you know with me and my fabulous stitch markers I want to mark which ones those are. So if this is 28 this 27, 25. <laughs> oh my god. I'm actually showing how great my math is. So 28, 27, 26, 25. So the legs are in the 25 area. So what I want to just do is put a stitch marker here and so I can mark it and I'm going to do the same on both sides and then I'm just going to take a look at the picture exactly see where they're attached and uh, attach those at this time. So continue to do that and attach your legs. Okay so now I have my legs. <laughs> Look at the position. Um, now I have my legs in the position. I'll turn his legs over and I have the arms attached and now it's time for me to stuff the head and you don't want to be cheap with it so we really want to stuff it because you can see it still looks like a cone head right now. So let's uh, get him all worked out and start stuffing. <laughs> okay so now it's time to bring on these nubbly things. The nubbly things were his horns. So let's give him some horns next. We're going to sew those on. Make sure you do stuff a little bit in here and attach. Just so you're aware I really did stuff him like really stuffed him because you really do want to get rid of that cone head look. So you really have to get in there and don't be shy. Just really ram it up into the top so that you can get the nice shaping of the head just like so. Okay so I have his horns attached, his legs are attached, his arms are attached. It's now just ready to finish off the body. Now I want you to like normally I would say yeah, yeah let's follow along but this is really awkward even for me to film. So I'm going to tell you to go and refer to the instructions. We've covered enough on how to be able to in single uh, crochet decrease like two together and what I want you to do is follow uh, rounds number 29 to 33. Make sure that you have enough stuffing in your your body and then pull to uh, pull the tail together and weave off. I'm going to really rely on you to finish this because um, it's it's going to be too hard to show you in order to keep it within the camera angle. So complete the finish off round number 29 all the way to 33 and then fasten it off together and then you basically have the body of your Mike the Monster. So here he is. He's fabulous. Now he's just ready for the final touches which includes some eyes which is the finishing of the eyes as well as a mouth and then he's complete. This has been so much fun.
Okay, so while off camera, you can see that I have put the face onto my character and I've actually added a little graduation hat, which is a pattern that I've written. And for this tutorial reasons, I'm gonna just provide you those written instructions to be able to make one for yourself. And honestly, on the inside is just a cereal box just to make it square and absolutely fabulous. I did permanently attach it to the head, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So with the, the face, you're gonna require felt but in that, my case, I'm gonna have a little bit of a talent when it comes to yarn bombing and stuff. Now the teeth aren't perfect, but you know what? Nothing in life is perfect. But what she's provided is instructions to be able to make it with felt. Now you should know, I went to the Walmart and they have self-sticking felt. Don't even bother. This stuff absolutely does not stick to any kind of crochet. And as Stacy indicates that you'll want to get some crafting glue and be able to do that. So I could have done the eyeball, but I had the wrong, actually it doesn't look too bad in the monitor here, but it's the wrong um, color that I wanted. And so I end up getting and yarn bombed an eye. And basically I just did a circle and then I just a couple of layers of the all in single crochet of the light blue. And really once I got it done, I just sewed it. Now you will notice that on the eye here, okay, there's a little bit of an, of an overlap. When I sewed it and I stretched it, I realized that I could see some of the white kind of bleeding through. It wasn't a perfect line. So all I just did is that I went around the eye and I just traced it with single crochet. Now this is not per the instructions. This is what I've done. And essentially I went around and I just provided a line around and then I went on a second round, but every uh, few I went two together so that it would fold over. So basically, see, it's just kind of forcing it up. It's like kind of very much like an eye. And then with the mouth, what I did is that I actually created the felt first. See how much that would change it? <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's laughing there. And what I did is I used the shape of the mouth and I, I literally just stuck it to the material and then I traced it with single crochet and then basically took it off and then I did a black interior and then I did shells for teeth and I didn't put on his retainer. I also did the graduation hat and basically it's just a square piece like this and there is just a little tail with a tassel and then basically just um, single crochet is formed into a circle and then sewed to the underside of the hat and so um, a really easy uh, project to do. I really love doing this project and um, this has been a lot of fun so I look forward to seeing your creativity online. You just have to send us your entries when you get it done and of course every time you do a separate entry you'll want to do it. Now this little character will sit up on its own. It's fabulous. Um, the hands basically are really long but as you know the character that he's all arms and legs and uh, but he's a little bit posable and I think he's a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank freshstitches.com, Red Heart, as well as the Crochet Crowd for being able to put this tutorial together. Uh, without the team of the three of us this would not be possible and thank you so much and we'll see you online soon. Bye bye now. So that's it for today. We look forward to seeing your creativity available. Uh, just keep showing us on our Facebook pages, whether it's Fresh Stitches or whether it's the Crochet Crowd or even Red Heart. We would love to see your completed Mike the Monsters. Now you have until January 29th to submit in your actual finished uh, photos. So you have to submit those to thecrochetcrowd.com. There's a link in the more information of this video to be able to access to send us a picture of your final one. Now this is a lot of fun, fabulous and he is just waiting to give monster hugs. So on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com, on behalf of Red Heart, as well as Stacy over at uh, Fresh Stitches, thank you so much for participating. And until next time, if you love this concept, just uh, you drop us a line on our Facebook and we'll be sure to run another mystery crochet long in the near future. Until then, let's see.